Welcome, Alan Burroughs, to the Actor Shakespeare Project, which you are the artistic director. That's Welcome. That's right. Thank you, Jojo. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So tell us about what is the Actors Shakespeare Project. Sure. Uh, we're a Somerville-based theater company. We're just about to go into our 10th anniversary season. We are the only uh, resident acting company north of Trinity Rep in Providence. Um, and that means that we have a group of 20 uh, seasoned professionals who make up part of our company. And um, every year we um, get together and decide what titles we're going to do. And then we uh, gather all our energies and gather to the directors and figure out where we're going to do them. We're an itinerant company, which means we perform, uh, well, we perform in Davis Square off and on. Or we perform uh, down in the theater district, right down in downtown Crossing. Or we're over in Roxbury. Or we're up in Medford. We find site-specific places to do our Shakespeare plays and other plays as well. Uh, we did a new play recently over in Central Square. So uh, we've uh, been around for a while. All of our actors are local actors who have either been to New York and are back or else grew up in this community and have uh, made their, uh, their lives and their careers in the Boston area. And uh, they're either teachers or um, professionals or uh, a number of other things, but they're all very creative people, and that's who uh, makes up the Actor Shakespeare Project. When did the Actor Shakespeare Project begin? Tell uh, us, take us through the timeline, right. the history. Yeah, so uh, we began in 2004 uh, it, with, with a production of uh, Richard III, and we did uh, three productions that year, Richard III, Measure for Measure, and then Julius Caesar. And then um, essentially it grew from there to where we were doing four productions a year. Uh, we've done as many as six productions a year. Uh, we also work in the schools. We work in the DYS system uh, as a way of using Shakespeare and his language and the power of the relationships between people as a way of bringing people out of themselves. Uh, we work with the uh, Boston Arts Academy. We work with the Boston Day and Evening Academy. We work. Uh, we, we have a collaboration that we're about to start up with the Charlestown Working Theater, where we're going to be able to do a lot of training for uh, youth and students. Uh, we have a uh, summer youth intensive training coming up in June. Let me see. The dates of that are uh, July 8th to August 3rd. So um, if kids are looking for something to do for the summer and they want to find a way of expressing themselves through Shakespeare, they can sign up for that. And ultimately, that will culminate in a performance of Romeo and Juliet. Uh, we also have a Shakespeare summer workout, which is open to young people and adults. And the dates of that are June 21st to 23rd. That's taught by two of our resident acting company members, Jenny Israel and Mara Sidmore. And that's going to be taking place in our new rehearsal studio in the Somerville Armory on the second floor. That's where our offices are. So we're just creating this fantastic new rehearsal space over there where people can come and find out what it's like to experience working on Shakespeare, uh, to find what those words are like, to find out what it feels like to be in that type of interaction with another individual. So. This is exciting. I have yeah. so many questions to ask you about what <laughs> you just said. But now, yeah. we're going to look at a clip that you did in May. Right. Yeah, we just closed it. You yeah. just closed it. And let's check that out. It's, uh, it's Pericles, That's correct? Right. Yeah. From Shakespeare. Right. So let's, let's check that out. OK, great. Wind is loud. 
that hast thou had, my dear? No light, no fire. The unfriendly elements forgot thee utterly. Nor have I time to give thee hallowed to thy grave, but straight must cast thee scarcely coffined in the ooze. Wherefore, monument upon thy bones, and ere remaining lamps, the belching whale and humming waters must overwhelm thy corpse, lying with simple shells. My corridor, bid Nestor bring me spices, ink and paper by casket in my jewels, and bid Nicander bring the satin coffer, lay the babe upon the pillow, hide thee, whilst I say a priestly farewell to her. Suddenly, woman, sir. Alan, that was fabulous. Thank you, Just Georgia. fabulous. Yeah. All the drama with Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think this is, is this why people are drawn to Shakespeare? I think so. You know, if you imagine back in the day when he was presenting these plays, he had, there was no lighting. They performed them, you know, in the heat of the day. Most of the audience was standing up. They would go on, you know, for about four hours. We cut them down now so that, you know, modern day attention spans are a little shorter. That's they have more, you know, they got places to go. But back in the Elizabethan day when they were performing at the Globe or some such thing. So these were, these were stories that really appealed to people's uh, sense of passion, their sense of longing, their sense of wanting to hear about people's lives in a very direct way. And you could reach out and touch the actors. You know, there was a lot of, there was no like, I'm in a play, I don't see the audience. There was a lot of interaction between the actors and the audience. So it was a real festival atmosphere. Plus the fact, for a lot of the, the, the history plays and all the people that are referred to, the audience would have known the kings and queens and princes that they were all talking about because right. Shakespeare was actually, he was working for first King James and then Queen Elizabeth, right? So they, they kept him kind of on salary to write these plays. So while they were a lot of fun, you know, kind of romances like the comedies like Midsummer Night's Dream and stuff like that, stuff that we're familiar with, Romeo and Juliet, a tragedy, right? These were plays that people could really key into in a way and get swept up in. And we think that that really appeals to people still, even though they may have seen it many, many times. Because, because what's happening, Shakespeare is pulling on the heartstrings. That's right. And people today, like back in the day, we need to connect with these raw emotions. That's right. Because this is what keeps us alive. That's right. Yeah. And by the way, you were fabulous in that last scene. <laughs> Just fabulous. Well, thank you. Um, I uh, I did direct that show in a way that um, kind of went to the place that you're talking about, where where it hits people in the gut, you know, and that's what people respond to. Next year, can I talk about next year a little you bit? Could talk, you could talk about next year, but I just wanted to ask <laughs> you something about the play yeah. before we get into that. Sure. How do you prepare yourself to get into character right. for that role because you are so dramatic? Right, right. Um, well, I think what you do is you just kind of look at the language and run the language over and over and over. And, and the thing about Shakespeare's language is he has a way of getting into your bones and getting it into your blood that you may not even have to do that actively. If you just, you know, repeat it, examine it, figure out what the relationships are, a lot of that work you don't have to impose on it. Shakespeare does that work for you. And that's what we think oftentimes, is that Shakespeare is so inaccessible. Like people are, oh, I don't understand all that Shakespeare language. But if you actually just let it flow over you, because he wrote in a certain style of poetry, if you let it just kind of come at you, you find all of a sudden that in spite of yourself, you're actually understanding what's going on. It's like my brother says, you know, I come see your shows. I don't understand the first act at all. And then I understand everything in the second act. Oh, okay. And that's because if you make yourself available to this language, like you say, it really pulls on the heartstrings and you let yourself go with it, then actually it kind of carries you away. Like a really good story. That's all that Shakespeare is. He knew how to tell stories. As a matter of fact, he didn't invent most of the stories that he wrote about. A lot of them he took from a gentleman named Plutarch, another guy named Hollinshead. A lot of the stories he was picking up 
from other people, uh, his contemporaries and stuff like that, and he crafted them, and that we always assume, oh, Shakespeare wrote that. But actually, he took a lot of those ideas because he knew that they had appeal. He knew that people were excited about him. And so he goes, well, I'm a playwright. I'm going to turn that into this play. Right. You're going to come to my theater. You're going to stand six hours in the sun, you know, eating a piece of mutton or something. You know what I mean? And you're going to be able to talk to the actors while they're doing it, and we're all going to have a really good time. So that's all Shakespeare is. Unfortunately, oftentimes nowadays, it gets a little too formal. Like, we like to think of Shakespeare the way we do it at Actors Shakespeare Project as intimate. Like, we have the audience sit right up close to us, like, like you to me. Oh, that's this great. This is where I would be doing the play sure. to you, right? And I'd be talking to you, and I'd be talking to this person, and we'd expect that type of interaction. And then all of a sudden, the whole thing opens up for people. And that's right. how we like to perform it. Uh, not, not with, like, high callers and a lot of, you know, formalization kind of stuff. It's no. not you and them, it's a we. That's it's the right. we factor. Bingo. That's and, what it and, is. And the success to Shakespeare, now that you're talking about it, yeah. is that Shakespeare did what what people do that are very successful today. He knew how to tell a great story. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Music, people that tell stories with music, yeah. people that tell stories with movies. Yeah. Their movies and, and songs live forever. Right, right. Yeah. So that's why Shakespeare is still alive and yeah. well. Yeah. So let's talk about what's going to be going on. All right. He said, can I tell you about next year? <laughs> yeah. Next year, um, you know, we announced our season uh, about a month ago at a press conference with uh, Mayor Menino downtown oh, right. in City Hall. Good. He actually announced it in, in partnership with... Uh, uh, Somerville Mayor Joe Curtatoni. Right. He came down and he did it as well. We're really happy to have him there. Um, we're starting off in the Strand Theater in Dorchester with Romeo and Juliet. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. It's a play that we have never done before, but it's really one that has so much impact, so much import. It really appeals not only to the young people, but also the parents of young people. It's such oh. a heart-rending story. It's a beautiful story. The language is so amazing. And, um, and so we're doing that down at the Strand. I'm going to be co-directing that with uh, one of our company members, Bobby Steinbach. Uh, it's a co-directing is an experiment for us going this year is because we're hoping that we can do twice as much in the same amount of time. And uh, we share a lot of ideas about design. We're really excited to be at the Strand. Strand's a beautiful old, you know, classic theater, and that's kind of an underserved part of Boston, really, Upham's Corner. So we want to be part of the renaissance of uh, that area. Then we're going to move into an historical play, Henry VIII. Now, oh, my goodness. Yeah. How, how yeah. many wives did Henry VIII have? He had eight. How did he do it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, he offed some of them. Oh, Mainly, he, he, yeah. he, he, he cut their heads off? Yeah, he cut their heads Why? off. Well, because he didn't, some of them didn't give him a male heir, and it was very oh, important to him. That's His awful. father, Henry VII, said, do one thing. Make sure you carry on the line, <gasps> right? So that play is going to be directed by um, a Shakespeare luminary, uh, Tina Packer who uh, founded Shakespeare and Company in the western part of the state. She's directed for us before, uh, and that's going to be at the Modern Theater, right down in the theater district. And that, uh, Romeo and Juliet opens on October 5th, runs till November 5th. Then we open Henry VIII on December 14th. That runs till January 6th at the Modern Theater. It's a beautiful, old, restored theater uh, at Suffolk University. Uh, it's where the first talkie film was shown actually the what is the theater. talkie film the first uh, movie yeah, oh, the first oh, movie oh, with movie. sound oh first movie with sound yeah. I never heard of it yeah so they did the jazz called singer the there talkie film yeah okay first talkie and uh, then we're gonna do uh, something a little different we're gonna do a uh, Chekhov play called the cherry orchard directed by Amelia Ben Susan oh. uh, we try now to do one non Shakespeare a year okay. because uh, we feel like well, we've been doing a lot of Shakespeare. We've done, we're now kind of having to repeat some of the titles. They're always different, even when you're repeating. Right. But we're, uh, Chekhov is, you know, he's a Russian playwright that also appeals to people on that heart level. I just whacked my mic. Sorry about that. But, uh, uh, 
that's uh, going to be a very powerful play directed by Amelia Ben Susan, who runs uh, the Emerson Theater Department. And then uh, one of our company members, uh, Robert Walsh, is going to direct As You Like It in the spring. And that's, uh, oh, that's just a very, very fun pastoral comedy. It's one of Shakespeare's really popular plays. There are going to be a lot of company members in that. Uh, we haven't determined what the venue is going to be for that yet, but uh, we'd like it to be uh, really accessible to people because that's what we like to do, is make sure that people can get to our plays by public transportation easily. And uh, we like to think about people's parking. We like it to make Beautiful. it easier for people to get out and see our shows. It's really important for us. So all the people, your, your actors, are they, you said they're professional. Is mm. this what they do day in and day out? Yep. And, and they get paid yeah. through your company? Yeah. We have all you, we're uh, uh, SAG? By professional, yeah, we're SAG actors, we're equity actors. Uh, it means that, uh, you know, uh, that's where a lot of them get their health insurance from, from the amount of work, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's something that people work really hard at. A lot of them are teachers as well. A lot of them have other jobs as well. But uh, yeah, they're all professionals. This is what they've chosen to do, and they're keeping and, at it. And when do you cast? When can people try out to be oh, uh, absolutely. in your company? Oh, how, do, how do they yeah. do this? Where do they go? Well, there's, a, there's an organization called Stage Source, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of a place where actors can go. They sign up for auditions, and they can audition for all the theater companies in town. We also hold auditions uh, for both non-equity actors and equity actors every spring for a few days. We see, I see every year about 400 people audition for my company. Wow! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if, if people have the interest and they have the passion and they put all that interest and passion into a monologue or a scene, then they can come in and bring it and, uh, and we can see if there's a fit for them. It's something that uh, we would like to make ourselves accessible. We like to be part of the community. It's really important to us. I'm looking forward to seeing some of your performances because I'm, I'm pumped up. Yeah, I hope you can come, yeah. Okay. It's, uh, it's, the thing is, is we, because it's, it's hard for people to get out, you know, oftentimes they're like, oh, I'll just stay home and watch a video rather than going oh, yeah. out, oh, no. finding parking, paying for a ticket price. Right. You know, we try to make it as easy as possible for people to get out and, and, and get into a room with a group of other people for a live performance. It's super important for us. Well, let's check out your second clip. You have, okay. a, you have a clip of Macbeth, yes. right? Yeah. So let's check that out. All right. Lay on. Wow, <laughs> all the drama. I guess you you just went down. Yeah, I went down hard, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you do a lot of scenes to practice that, that fight scene? That fight scene, yeah, you gotta build it move by move. So that is, and that's a lot of, you know, going through, making sure what works. We have a violence designer, Ted Hewlett was the guy who uh, designed the violence in that. And uh, you gotta make sure that you're safe, but you gotta sell it as well, it has sure. to look, uh, it has to look real. It can't look like we're just out there, you know, mamby pambying around. So. Right. And your anniversary is coming up. Yes. Tenth anniversary. Tenth Tell anniversary us about of it. the company. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's a huge event for us. Uh, we just feel 
so grateful to the city of Somerville and uh, the city of Boston and for all of our audiences for coming out year after year and supporting us. And uh, we're really excited about next year. It's, um, it's going to be a banner year for us. And we're also doing uh, another project throughout the year, which is called What's in a Name, which is a community-based project that we'll want to invite people to go to our website at. They can check out our website. I guess you guys show it at the end of the program. Well, you could tell us what it is, too. ActorsShakespeareProject.org. Actors? ActorsShakespeareProject.org. And one of the other pro programs that we're doing is called What's in a Name? You know, Juliet asks, uh, what's in a name? And... Uh, Basically, it's about people's individual stories in the community. They bring in, they talk about their name, who their parents were, how it relates to Shakespeare, and that we're going to actually uh, have culminate on the stage where we're doing Romeo and Juliet. So we want people to be invited to go uh, to our website and check out uh, that program because it's going to be... It's going to be interesting on how Shakespeare and our company and the community kind of all folds together. I it's love really this. What a us. great yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. And and how do you have a program for teenagers? Yeah. And tell us about that and right. how kids can become involved. Yeah. And, and if they're a little bit shy and apprehensive, yeah. what can they do to prep themselves beforehand? And right. how do you make it easy for them to just say, right. I want to be a part of that? That's right. Well, that they can check out our summer youth intensive this summer. Uh, they can be applications are online for that. Uh, and then they could just gotta come in and when they come into one of our classes, we can show them just how to feel good about themselves, you know what I mean? And express that through Shakespeare's language. It's just a step-by-step -step process. And it is so awe-inspiring when you see these kids who come in and they may be nervous about getting on stage or whatever, and then they start to wrap their hearts and minds around Shakespeare's language, and all of a sudden you see their confidence build and how they carry themselves, and the fact that they can get a grip on this language that seems unusual, you know, or alien, and then like, you know what, it's just Shakespeare. He was just a poet. He was just a man like anybody else. Son of a glove maker, lived, you know, moved down from Stratford-upon-Avon, made his way into London, just started writing, just like anyone could do, just like young writers coming up today. And, uh, and when people realize that this stuff is all very accessible, then they, they realize that it's, it's something that they want to invest in, mentally and emotionally, and that's what we want to support for people, especially young people, because, you know, in this day and age, you know, <laughs> kids are so bombarded with so much stuff, and they're judged on so many levels, you know what I mean? Oh, you're not good enough because the technology, you know, you're not keeping up, you're not, you know, and there's so much they gotta think about in order to feel like they belong. And Shakespeare, and live performance gives them permission to be themselves, you know, and to express themselves. And that's all that we want to do is just encourage that because that gives them the confidence to go through their day. Is there like a criteria for kids to be part of this group? I mean, how many kids are you bringing into the into your you group? You know, I, I think there are about 20, 20 kids in the summer youth intensive. And then we also go into the schools. We teach programs in the schools throughout the year. And uh, we work in you know different colleges. We run workshops. And now that we have this rehearsal studio, now we're going to be able to expand on that as well. Beautiful. So really looking forward to that. Well, I just thought, okay. So if you could just sum up a little bit about yeah. what we talked about today, right. because we have two minutes left. Great. So just take it away. Great. Well, what I want people to encourage, I want to encourage people to come out to see Romeo and Juliet in the fall. Uh, I then want them to come see what Henry VIII is about, and then the cherry orchard, and then as you like it in the spring. Because we just want to make it easy for people to come out and enjoy this language, and enjoy each other in a room with this whole kind of fired up performance thing that we do. And then, and then take the summer youth intensive this summer, or take the Shakespeare workout in, uh, at the end of June, and, or come do the What's in a Name project in the fall. Or, you know, basically know that people can stop by and make inquiries anytime at the office, too. We're right there on Highland Ave at 191 Highland Ave. 191 Highland 191 Ave. 191 Highland Beautiful. Ave. Beautiful. Or actorsshakespeareproject.org. 
And your tickets are affordable? Yeah, they are. And what, we make, what's the price of your tickets? The average price of the ticket is $38. Okay. That's the average price. Sure. But we also are running deals all the time. And subscriptions, I think, are uh, in the mid-100 range for all four plays. Wow, yeah. that's great. And so, are there senior citizen discounts? Absolutely. Wow, you know? that's and we fabulous. Run, yeah, we run the Facebook discounts and Twitter discounts and everything else. All you got to do is watch for them because we want people to come out and see our things. Are you on any other sites besides your sites? If, uh, are you on any where people can find out where your plays, like Boston.com? Absolutely, yeah. They can go to Bostix. They can go to the... The theater scene website they can go to anytime all you have to do is google us and all that will come up beautiful yeah, yeah. beautiful this has been so fantastic well it's a pleasure alan burrows that's as right. an a l l y n that's right right yeah. and from the actor shakespeare project you are terrific thank, thank you, Joe, you Joe. so much for being here it's a real pleasure just wonderful i'm looking forward to seeing several of your plays can't wait and uh good luck to you thanks Joe.